After Kennedy's assassination, Lyndon B. Johnson became president. His World War II experience is pretty much the exact opposite of John F. Kennedy's. Johnson was a congressman during the war, but was also in the Naval Reserves, and President Franklin D. Roosevelt sent Johnson and a survey team to the Southwest Pacific to assess conditions and see what General MacArthur needed. Upon his arrival, Johnson said that he wanted to be in a plane during combat, and MacArthur put him aboard an aircraft to travel across an area that was commonly patrolled by Japanese planes. Johnson never came under attack, however he said he did, and in exchange for being awarded the Silver Star, Johnson did his job of filming conditions in the Pacific and argued to Congress about what MacArthur needed. Regarding the chaotic political situation in Iraq, President Johnson aided the Iraqi government and U.S.-Iraqi relations became very good under Iraqi President Abdul Salam Arif and later under his brother Abdul Rahman Arif. As American and Iraqi relations became closer, the Ba'athists staged a coup in 1968 and overthrew Rahman Arif's Nasserist Iraqi Republic and they established a Ba'athist Iraqi state under the reign of President Ahmed Hassan al-Bakr. The Johnson administration didn't really know what to make of this new regime and initially saw al-Bakr as someone who they could work with, but al-Bakr began to warm relations with the Soviets. However, Johnson left office before too much could be done between the U.S. and Iraq. Okay, on to the big one, Vietnam. Before the Gulf of Tonkin incident, the Johnson administration's views on Vietnam were pretty similar to Kennedy's, where the U.S. reaffirmed support for South Vietnam. However, Johnson noted how ineffective the South Vietnamese had been against the Viet Cong, and the Gulf of Tonkin incident came in August of 1964, where U.S. ships were attacked by NVA torpedo boats. Then another alleged attack came, but in reality, there were only a bunch of waves. But the Johnson administration passed the Gulf of Tonkin resolution, which basically gave him the ability to do whatever he wanted. Squadron commander and future Medal of Honor recipient, as well as Reform Party vice presidential candidate James Stockdale, was one of the U.S. pilots flying overhead during the second alleged attack. Stockdale said his superiors ordered him to keep quiet about this. After he was captured by the North Vietnamese, this knowledge became a heavy burden on him. He later said that he was concerned that his captors would eventually force him to reveal what he knew about the second incident as he was constantly tortured during his imprisonment where he was a part of the Alcatraz gang in Vietnam. A major aspect to Johnson's handling of the Vietnam War was Operation Rolling Thunder where the U.S. would bomb North Vietnam from 1965 to 1968. It would be largely ineffective due to Johnson personally wanting to approve of every single target which is where the idea of the U.S. military fighting with one hand tied around their back in Vietnam comes from. Johnson's bombing plans of North Vietnam gave only one path, which the North Vietnamese knew, and heavily armed with anti-aircraft weapons and jets. Basically, Johnson's idiocy sabotaged his own air campaign from 1965 throughout 1968. Johnson escalated the ground war in Vietnam steadily throughout his administration's handling of the Vietnam War. The war from 1965 through 1967 was considered to be a stalemate, and the American counter-guerrilla warfare doctrine adopted the search-and-destroy strategy where Americans searched for Viet Cong activity and destroyed it, and then they left. This doctrine was not very effective in the long term when what they should have followed was a clear and hold doctrine, but Johnson's administration had decided to wage an attritional warfare where victory was counted in bodies. In 1967, a strong 52% of Americans disapproved of the Johnson administration's handling of the war in Vietnam. The 1968 Tet Offensive changed the entire view of the Vietnam War. Americans saw on television the full force and brutality of the NVA and VC and believed that the war was unwinnable and that the Johnson administration had been misleading the public on the war all along. Peace talks had begun in Paris in May, but had failed to yield any reasonable results. The major two obstacles in negotiating were the unwillingness of the United States to allow the Viet Cong to partake in South Vietnamese government because why would you want an insurgent group to be allowed to participate in government? And then there was, of course, the unwillingness of North Vietnam to recognize the legitimacy of South Vietnam even being a country. The war would therefore continue and Johnson dropped out of the Democrat primaries as he was deeply unpopular. Outside of the Vietnam War, the Johnson administration launched Operation Power Pack in 1965 during the Dominican Civil War to support the Loyalist faction of the Dominican Republic's government, and the Inter-American Peace Force was made up of seven states in the Western Hemisphere and against the Castro-supported constitutionalist factions. Power Pack was a success and only lasted a little more than four months where a ceasefire was declared and new elections took place. Turning to Africa, Johnson's administration continued to engage in the Congo crisis against the Simba and Quilu rebels. American Special Forces launched Operation Dragon Rouge with Belgian and mercenaries hired by the Democratic Republic of the Congo to free hostages held by Simba rebels. Most of the 250 hostages would be rescued and 18 would be killed with 40 severely wounded. 
1,600 foreign nationals and 150 Congolese civilians were successfully evacuated as a result. Cuban support for the Simbas would be forcibly engaged with Operations White Giant and South to also break the Simba Rebellion. Nigeria entered a state of civil war under Johnson's administration between the Nigerian state and the Biafran minority breakaway state. Starting in 1967, Johnson mostly kept neutral but saw value in the Nigerian government having a victory due to oil reasons. However, the American public was outraged by the sight of Nigeria's genocide and starvation upon the Biafran population, which was broadcasted across the nation via television. Biafra became a topic in the 1968 presidential election, and on September 9, 1968, future Republican President Richard Nixon called for Lyndon B. Johnson to take action in helping Biafra. Meanwhile, Johnson was unfazed. Johnson would also be very slurry in terms of referring to seeing Biafrans dying on TV, which really shows his feelings on the matter. With the ongoing and increasing unpopular war in Vietnam, and with the Biafran crisis constantly being shown to the American public, in addition to Johnson only using slurs when referring to Biafrans, Richard Nixon was elected in 1968. His foreign policy and its impacts will be the topic of the next video in this series. What did you think of Johnson's foreign policy? Pretty much like Kennedy, Johnson relatively served only one term in office, but his foreign policy had lots of impacts and a lot went on. Like every president, Johnson made his decisions without hindsight and most of the time with incomplete information. But let me know in the comments what you thought of it, and thank you for watching.